Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, he is returning. He's kind enough to come back to us. <clears throat> World champion, Olympic medalist, and now Olympic trials commentator for his home country of Australia. Today, we are sitting down and digging into the mind of James Magnuson. Thanks for having me, Coleman. There's nowhere I would rather be. It's always a pleasure getting to talk to you. Uh, I wanted to hit record right away so we could, so we could get into this. Um, you were so first things first. You were commentating for the Australian Olympic Trials, which was streaming on Amazon Prime, so everyone could see it, which was awesome. I mean, just just take me through your experience of Adelaide and what it was like being on the other side of the microphone. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I've done little bits and pieces in the past. This is the first time. Um, as a, a country that we've broadcast our trials internationally. So it's pretty cool for you guys to get a chance to see our trials. They're usually behind closed doors and none of you guys know what we're doing. We've historically always had pretty fast uh, Australian trials. Um, so I thought it was awesome that the rest of the world got to see those for the first time. Um, it was really weird commentating and not being in the pool for an Olympic trials. This was my fourth Olympic trials. So my first one I went to as a 16-year-old uh, swimming and now my fourth one as a commentator. Uh, but it was a wild week. I mean, um, they certainly lived up to all the hype. It was probably the fastest um, Olympic trials we've ever had across the board in Australia. So it was super exciting to be a part of. Yeah. I, I mean, just a little bit from your perspective, what was what was the weirdest part about commentating or, or what was the best part in your mind? The weirdest part, uh, one of the mornings we had four heats of the 1500 freestyle. <laughs> so trying to think of enough stuff to talk about <laughs> to get through four heats of 1500 freestyle was insane. I'm not exactly an aficionado of distance swimming at the best of times. <laughs> um, so that was that was interesting. Um, the best part, look, we had a couple of uh, big events that were really exciting. Um, so for the morning heats, I was commentating for Amazon Prime. For the nighttime heats, uh, I was commentating live in stadium, so for the crowd. Mm. Uh, and so to commentate some of those races and get the crowd amped up and um, we got some world records, we got some Australian records, Commonwealth records. It was pretty awesome. And uh, to call my first world record for Kaylee McEwen's 100 backstroke, uh, that was a, a real honor. Dude, no kidding. Uh, I mean, so you alluded to this before we really dive into the swim nerd numbers aspect of this trials. You, you, you mentioned, and I, as a fan, I've certainly noticed, Australian trials is usually a very, very fast meet. Um, for for someone who swam at three of them um, and now has commentated at one of them, what makes it, what, what, what adds, what, what gets that electricity in the air to where the, the Australians just go at that meet? Yeah, I think uh, for a lot of young Australians, same as Americans, that their lifelong goal was to get to an Olympic Games. So historically, we, we have peaked for those trials. And sometimes a lot of those swimmers struggle to peak again for the Olympic Games. To peak twice in one year is tough. And historically, we've had our Olympic trials in March, months before the Olympic Games. This year, we moved it closer. But I think the depth that we're starting to get in some specific events uh, and a lot of those events where we've got a star, it's not just a star out on their own. We've got someone pushing them. For example, in the 100 back, it wasn't just Kay Kaylee McEwen out by miles on her own. She had Emily Seabom right on her heels. Um, same, you know, across the board in a number of events. So I think that, that really pushes our swimmers. And then I, I guess the weird one for us for this Olympic trial is probably the same for you guys in the US. We hadn't seen a lot of these swimmers racing at a high level in like 18 months. Um, so I personally was thinking maybe a few of these swimmers may have dipped off form. Um, it might have been hard for them through COVID, but it was the exact opposite. Um, everyone's gotten better during COVID. Uh, everyone's racing faster. Um, and, and we're sending away our strongest Olympic team probably since Athens in 2004, I reckon. 
that's high praise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look back to them, we had names like Thor, Packett, Quinn, uh, Libby Trickett, um, Jody Henry. Like that was a star-studded team. But this is this is a pretty good team. Um, if they can if they can hold on to that form for the next six weeks, which for us in Australia is a new frontier. This is only the second time we've done our trials close to the, the major meet. I know our coaches have been picking the brains of some of the best minds over in America to see if if we can kind of try and replicate what you guys do, which is swim faster at trials, but swim faster again at the major meet. Um, that's going to be the biggest challenge for our swimmers. If we can copy what you guys do, we're in for a big Olympics. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed at this stage. I'm, I'm really excited and I want to, touch on that a little bit uh, later and just get your thoughts on that double taper because um, like you said, it is kind of a new frontier for Australian swimming, but let's dive into some numbers and some, some swims right off the bat. We have to talk about Kaylee McHugh and she set a world record in the hundred back. You got to call it. Um, I mean, can you give me a little synopsis of her swims overall in the meet? She was just sensational across the board um, going 57, 45 in the hundred back. 204.28 for the fourth fastest swim in history in the 100. Sorry, in the 200 back. Um, I think she went a PB in the 200 IM as well. So mm. just she flew. Yeah, she flew. Um, she's had a really good program up on the Sunshine Coast here. So, you know, for some swimmers, trials in June for us is in, in the middle of winter. Um, so, you know, that training environment will have been altered a little. She's up on the Sunshine Coast swimming in great conditions i compare it to like florida conditions so she's swimming in the sun year round um she came in looking super fit uh watching her racing she's very skillful her underwaters her starts her turns are, are really on point and that's where she gained a lot of um advantage in those races uh interestingly enough i think her 100 backstroke was awesome can she go faster probably um can she break that world record again? Probably. Um, 200 backstroke, I believe she can get that world record as well. I think she had a little bit left up her sleeve. Um, and I thought she looked pretty relaxed and measured in that 200 backstroke. And the other big one was the 200 individual medley. I reckon she has got at least a second, if not two seconds up her sleeve in that event. She cruised through that. She didn't really put the hammer down in the backstroke leg. Um, she wasn't pushed as much in that event as other events. And so if if I was a betting man, I'd say she does a big PB in that event um, at the Olympics. So it's a huge program for her. Um, but one of the things I've noticed about Kaylee is she's so relaxed. Like she's so easygoing. There's no hype. Even though she goes into um, this Olympics as our probably our number one gold medal chance, there still hasn't been a lot of talk here about Kaylee McEwen. You know, people are talking about pile traumas. People are talking about Ariane Titmus. But Kaylee McEwen's just cruising along um, under the radar. And I think that's such an awesome preparation for her to have. No kidding. Do you, um, at, at the U.S. trials, we obviously saw, you know, our young backstroker, Reagan Smith, make it in the 100, mm. But then surprisingly miss it in the 200. She got beat by two other girls um, and, and is out for that event. She's swimming the 200 fly as well um, in Tokyo. But do you, how do you reckon that? Do you think that makes it easier going in for Kaylee, knowing that possibly her top competitor and the, the world record holder won't be in it? Probably a little. I mean, I think the, the great unknown are those young swimmers that are coming up that we haven't really heard of before um, who've come to, to to the forefront during COVID. So um, we've seen some from Russia in the men's 100 freestyle and stuff. We don't know which names are going to pop up at, at Olympics time, but I think that would give... That would even relax Kaylee further, I think, knowing that Reagan's not going to be there in that 200 backstroke. It probably allows her to swim her own race even more without having the pace pushed too fast uh, by Reagan. Um, so I think she, she'd be full of confidence. Um, but the, the big thing for her, like you spoke about, the, the new frontier for us is double taper. Like we, a lot of coaches, this is either their first or their second crack at it. 
Um, so it is a whole new world for us in Australia. So if Kaylee can get that right, I'm backing her in for at least two gold medals at the Olympic Games. If she can absolutely nail it, I think she's a shot at three. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all in the hands of the coaching staff now. Mm. And so, I mean, you obviously had a lot of peers who were still competing there. You were on the Olympic team with Kyle Chalmers, Kate Campbell, um, Emily Seabom. Did, did you get to talk to any of them on deck and just get a sense of how those veterans are, uh, are handling themselves as well as these newer additions to the team? Yeah, they, they all seem pretty confident. I mean, I spoke a bit at length with Kyle. Um, he's super confident. He, he did what he needed to do um, during our trials. He wasn't really pushed. There was no one else even close to breaking 48 seconds. So Kyle just cruised through that one. He looked really good in the 200 freestyle. Um, our men's 4x200 freestyle is probably the pick of our relay swims on the men's side of things. And I think he'll focus on that one. Um, he didn't even do the 50 freestyle, which was surprising to me. So we had no one go sub 22, which was a little disappointing in comparison to what you guys had over there in America. Um, but yeah, Kyle, very relaxed, very confident, knows that he's got a big race coming up and it felt like he was just building towards that. Um, on the other side of that, you had Kate Campbell had to swim, you know, at her absolute peak, this trials just to get on the team, just to be a part of that relay team movement. Like those girls, my God, we are just absolutely spoiled with uh, <laughs> sprint freestylers in, in the women's side of things. Um, you know, it, 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 we could even go one, two in that women's hundred freestyle if, if things all fall into place. So um, we're spoiled there. And then Emily Seabom was a big story for us here in Australia. So, she had a bit of a, a down year in 2019 and a lot of people were writing her off saying she couldn't make another Olympic Games. Um, and then she was swam, you know, the best form she's swum since she won that world title. Um, she looked awesome. She's training with Michael Boll now, so she moved programs during the, the COVID break and, uh, yeah, really happy for her to make a fourth Olympic Games. So you, you mentioned relays and that's what I want to talk about next is that, you know, mm. looking ahead, um, Australian relays have just looked stellar lately on the men's and women's side. Uh, I want to hit that men's four by 200 first. We've seen results from both trials now from you, from us and from Australia. Um, I mean, I'm going to say it, I think it takes sub eight, uh, sorry, sub seven minutes to, to take that one. But, uh, the, like you said, Australia is looking strong. I think obviously there's Britain, Russia, Italy that are out there too. But um, what are you predicting from that one looking into your crystal ball? It's probably the most exciting relay on the men's side from an Australian perspective. Our, our 4 by 100 freestyle team, unfortunately, probably isn't going to be able to mix it um, with, with the big dogs in that line, which, you know, for, for me and coming from where I come from, that's that's very disappointing. But We've got to, um, I think, hedge our bets on that 4x200 team. Uh, interestingly, Matt Horton finished outside that top four, and he was our best relay swimmer in the 4x2 um, at the World Champs when we won gold. So it'll be really interesting to see what the coaches do with him. Probably, in my opinion, Great Britain are the dark horses in this one. I think they've had two, maybe three guys go 144. Um which is faster than we had anyone go at our trials, but we've got four guys going 145 loads. So it's going to, it's going to take, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a, a, a sub, um, sub seven minutes as well. Um, so it's a pretty interesting one. I'm backing Australia in for a medal. Um, they are the reigning world champs. And I, I think they, if they get it right, they can win that gold. It'll just be interesting to see what the makeup of that team is if they go with the experience of Mac Horton, if they throw in a youngster like Thomas Neal. Um, at our middle distance freestyle, even pushing towards distance freestyle, is looking a lot stronger at the moment in Australia than our sprinting, which is an interesting kind of change over the past four years. Absolutely. I, I think it's interesting also that, um, you know, your top, individual 200 freestyler uh and Clyde Lewis didn't even make the team um he was 144.9 yeah. 
at world champs in Guangzhou. And then, and then I think he was seventh in the 200 yeah. individually at trials. We had a few like that on the men's side of things, swimmers who have had been strong in the past few years that just missed the team. Like we had Jack Cartwright was kind of entrenched in that men's four by 100 team, missed the team, Clyde Lewis missed the team. Um, so that was a little disappointing for those guys and surprising for me because they were two guys that I thought were going to be mainstays for the next probably four-year Olympic cycle. So that, that was surprising, I think, to everyone that those guys had fallen out of form um, so badly in the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so that, to me, that was... Was it was a shock to to you guys as four by two especially um, because it is because you are the defending champs and because you guys do have such a strong core there but I, I feel like you'll be able to fill it in especially with the rise of Elijah Winnington like you said that mid distance freestyle core is looking really good um, yeah I mean as you said both both of our countries have yet to have someone go one forty four individually this year and so mm. it's 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 really a toss up, I think, on who can kind of nail that double taper in this event, because I have to imagine we'll see at least a couple 144s on that relay. Yeah, it's uh, I was I was happy with the, the depth we had in the 200 freestyle, but I was a little disappointed. Nobody really pushed the pace and went 144. Um, I don't know if you watched the race, but everyone sort of played cat and mouse. No one really went out after it. Kyle always waits till the last 25 metres to make his move. Sometimes I wonder if Kyle just dropped the hammer a little bit early. I'd say 75 metres out. Could he mm. dip under that 145? And then the other guys in that 200 freestyle race, they, they do it every year in Australia. They play right into Kyle's hands. They just sit off the pace, sit off the pace, and let him cruise through. And he knows he's got the speed the last 25 metres. So as I'm watching that race, I'm thinking, who's going to push the pace? And, you know, if Elijah goes early, he can probably close this out um but that that's just sometimes in that 200 freestyle it, it is more about the race itself than the time particularly the trials events um so I, I hope a couple of those boys can stand up and go sub 145 certainly split well well into the 144s um for that relay i'm hoping so as well uh and then the next <laughs> the next relay I want to hit on is the women's four by one, as you mentioned, I don't, I don't know if this is worth talking about just because <laughs> you guys look good. <laughs> just give what? us the medal. Like, <laughs> <up> the <laughs> now, now there's a reason we swim the race, but, uh, <laughs> but, but dang. I mean, remember when we like in, in women's swimming to go sub 53, it was huge. Like it was, Barely any in the world was doing it. Um, I know we've got girls going sub-52 now, which is crazy, but to have four women go 52 point in the final it was just, like, crazy. I, I, I didn't think, you know, we'd see that for a long time. Um, the depth we've got, Emma McKeon, I mean, she's turned herself into a sprinter, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I spoke to her. I spoke to her mum and I said, you know, surely... Emma's not going to do that 200 freestyle. Like, it's 200 freestyle is pretty stacked. Ariane's swimming so fast. I have no doubt Katie will be swimming fast come Olympics. If I was Emma, I'd be focusing in on that 100 freestyle because I think that's her best shot at an individual goal. And I think doing a heats, semis, and finals of a 200 freestyle will really detract from that speed. Um, yeah, Emma, Kate, uh, we've got some rising stars in that 50, uh, that women's 100 freestyle as well. So, they're, they're full of confidence. Um, you know, I, I don't think they're, they're counting their eggs before they've hatched, but, um, you know, it's looking like a pretty dominant relay team and probably across the board our, our best um, of any of the relay chances. I mean, I, yeah, I have to agree with you there. Um, yeah, I mean, 50, 52-3 was Emma McKeon's winning time. Kate Campbell second at 52-5. Maddie Wilson, 52-7. Meg Harris, 52-9. I mean, I, I have confidence in the American women um, I, I, that they will be better than they were at trials. Mm. And I can say that 100, like, I, I feel that way 100%. But Abby Weitzel won our trials in 53-5. And 53-5 <laughs> at your trials 
would have gotten seventh. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's isn't just it? the number. I, mean, I, I, I was a little surprised by the women's hundred freestyle at the US trials. Um, that was surprising. Uh, and if they if they want to be up there in the medals, that they're going to have to swim a lot faster. But I, I have no doubt they will. But yes, yeah, for us in Australia, we were surprised at that final. I mean, and that's 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 cool to see as just a fan of the sport of like it, like you said, like four women in one heat going fifty two from the same country. That's it's it's bonkers. Um, mm. So do you? <clears throat> Like, let's just say, okay, yeah, Australian women are, are going to get it. Who do you think could push them? Uh, I mean, we've got the U.S., we've got the Netherlands. Do you think there's anyone else? And I think those two teams are always kind of mainstays. Um, I mean, Canada might be a dark horse, but, do, you know, do you think there's a team that could really push them just to be like, okay, I'm, I'm scaring you at the, at the, 200 <laughs> or the 300 mark? I mean, from our perspective, outside of like the Americans are always the ones we're looking at, um, and outside of the Americans, uh, I don't think that any other teams have the have the depth um, to have our fourth fastest swimmer going fifty two nine. It just, I, I think, the first leg may be close, but I think by the time we get our third swimmer in the in the water, and we're still punching out fifty two mids. That's where it'll come down to probably us and, and America if they're up to it. But I, I can't see any other countries coming from the clouds and challenging. Fair enough. Yeah, we're the greatest. <laughs> we're the greatest challenger. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, so, so the last relay I want to break down, is, which I think it's, it is the women's 400 medley relay, which I think will be mm. really interesting. Um, mm. in, in Guangzhou, the U S ran away with it. The, you know, the women had a dominant performance. Australia was second. Um, but I, th I think there's been a lot of change since then. Uh, I think Australia has the emergence of, of a young breaststroker. That's, that's really looking on form. The correct me if I'm wrong. She went one Oh five, nine to win your trials. Yeah. Yeah. So that was big for us. And it was a big talk on pool deck. We needed, we needed a breaststroker to get close to you guys to give, uh, I assume we'll swim Kate in the freestyle. We need to give Kate a shot at your freestyle. And probably in the past, that's what's let us down is that breaststroke leg. Um, we've got a 105 breaststroke in now, and, and hopefully she can improve. She's young. And she's got, you know, six weeks to improve. Willie King is still a long way ahead in that breaststroke, and that's that's where we're going to struggle. But, you know, Kaylee McEwen's going to get us off to a great start and, as far as the women's uh, side of the relays, that's probably the most exciting relay because it will be, I think, the closest. Um, and, you know, America's got a pretty rich history in that medley relay. Um, but this is the first time, I think, in quite some time that we've had a breaststroker that we've got confidence in um, for, for that event. And that's, that's for our listeners, that's Chelsea Hodges, who dropped 105.99 in Australian trials to win it and qualify for the Australian team. So let's, I mean, let's just break it down a little bit. We've got Kaylee McEwen and backstroke, Chelsea Hodges, breaststroke, Emma McKeon, butterfly, Kate Campbell, freestyle. It's that's stacked. And so, and, and you know, you've got, you've got two youngsters and two real veterans there. And then on the women's side, if I'm just kind of pulling from like our top finishers, we've got Reagan Smith, who, who is, mm. who potentially could be right up there with Kaylee, I think. Uh, we've got Lily King, who, like you said, you know, world record holder in the hundred breast. Um, we've got Tori Husk, who is also a, a, a very, very young star who's rising, but you know, she won our trials at 55, six, I want to say 55, eight, maybe yeah. 55, yeah. Seven, eight or seven. Um, so she's right on par with Emma there. Yeah. And, and then yeah. I, and I guess, I, I guess Abby Weitzel is our closer as of right now. Um, we'll, you know, we'll see as, as we get to Tokyo and as the games progress. So I think it, I think it, it could be pretty dang close. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, to me, I, I envisage America goes in with half a second to 0.7 lead in the freestyle leg. That's, that's where I, I see it. And then, Kate Campbell is a great relay swimmer. Um, so you guys are going to have to find a hundred freestyler between now and, and uh, the Olympic games, because she's going to be hot on your heels. Um, 
and off trials form, she should be good enough. Uh, but if an American, one of the American girls can drop down into those 52 mids, then there's going to be a race. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it would take a good relay swim because we've, we've seen Kate do some silly things before on the end of a relay. Yeah. I, mean, I think yeah, she yeah. split 50 point once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It makes no sense. It was like, um, Lazak. Oh wait. Like but yeah. some of those times compared to the individuals just don't make any sense, but it's, it's nice to have for us. Absolutely. Um, so, so, so those are our relay previews and we had to, we had to talk about those and preview. I mean, it's going to be such a fun meet, especially with these narratives. Um, there's so, going to be so many good competitors there. So f- going back to just Australian trials, um, outside of the obvious performers, Ariane, um, Kaylee, who, who, who were your highlights? Who were you really excited to see, um, you know, go fast and look good heading into this Olympic games. Uh, we touched on him a little earlier, but Elijah Winnington. Um, so Elijah has been a rising star in Australia, breaking age group records through um, on, on his way up. And then 2018, he makes the Commonwealth Games. 2019, he's going into the, the World Championship trials as the new kid on the block. And he bombs and misses the team completely. And then everyone starts questioning, was this guy all hype type thing? And he came out this trials. He moved coaches. So he's now training with Dean Boxall, who's Ariane Titmus's coach. And uh, so new program. He's moved cities. He's moved from the Gold Coast to Brisbane. And he was super impressive in that 400 freestyle. Um, beyond the time that he swam, which was really good, it was the pressure of that race uh for us in australia so we had mac horton jack mclaughlin thomas neil who is a new young superstar and elijah winnington obviously four doesn't go into two and again beyond what time elijah swam it was really impressive that he was able to hold his nerve swim the race that he wanted to swim mac horton put all the pressure on him he could mac horton swim a, a really good race um but elijah held his nerve finished really strong his last 100 metres was super impressive. And I think he can go faster again at the Olympic Games. I think for him, after that trials, it's almost like the shackles are off. You know, he's back on the team. The pressure to, to qualify for the Olympic Games is, is done now. He, I don't think he'll go into the Olympics as the favourite. But I think because, uh, you know, of the, the rough year he had in 2019, he'll feel like just being there, is, is what he wanted to achieve and the pressure's off. And I think he can do some pretty cool things, both in the 400 um, and that, that four by two. And uh, I think that'll be interesting, particularly um, because in that summer of 2019, uh, Elijah came to the U.S. and raced at our, our summer national meet. And he raced, and I'm pretty sure beat, um, Kieran Smith, who is our young rising mid-distance star, who's now, and now they're both going to be competing in the 400 and 200 freestyles. I feel like that'll be a really fun race and narrative to follow because they've actually already raced before when neither of them had made the world champs team. Yeah. And it was really weird for us in Australia. So all the narrative here in Australia was around Mac Horton, mm. defending Olympic champion. And a lot of that other narrative was around Mac Horton versus Sun Yang. Will Sun Yang get off? these charges and will they go head to head again? So Elijah again had this really nice preparation where he came in under the radar and, uh, you know, really announced himself internationally now, I think. And this is going to be his first big meet where he goes in as an individual swimmer um, with a little bit of expectation, but uh, with the ability, I think, to go considerably faster than he did at trials. Agreed. And I'm, I'm again, excited to watch that, uh, for you moving forward into Tokyo, will you be in Tokyo? No, I'm actually, I'm writing for uh, news corp, which is a big news organization here. So I'll be writing articles daily throughout the whole Olympic games, which is pretty cool, but, um, they're sort of minimizing. I'm sure it's the same over there trying to minimize the amount of people that they send across to Tokyo, but I'm pumped to be involved 
in in some way, which would be really cool. Yeah, that's that's super exciting. So, as as a journalist, uh, what I mean, yeah. what races are you looking forward to the most at these 2021 games? Well, look, the big matchup, and and we can't shy away from it, is Titmus and Ledecky. Like we are nuts for that over here. Um, Australians love their distance freestyle and uh, Ariane. So coming into the trials, the the story, the narrative was, oh, Ariane's got a shoulder injury. She hasn't mm-hmm. been training well. She's not going to be swimming fast at these trials. This is this is what her coach told everyone. And so I was there with the other journalists and everyone's going, ah, oh, it's such a shame. You only get a chance once every four years and Ariane's injured. And I don't know if you've seen or heard about Ariane's coach. He's a very... Uh, eclectic guy. Uh, he's I have heard. He's a crazy dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like a Laurie Lawrence 2.0. <laughs> and uh, so he was he was tricking everyone. Obviously, like she must have been flying in training coming into that meet. So he's just lowered the expectation right down for it. And we're all watching, going, "What a shame, Marianne's not going to be swimming fast." And then she <laughs> swims, I believe, the second fastest 400 freestyle of all time. Um, I think top couple of swims in the 200 freestyle as well looked amazing. 800 freestyle, I, I don't think she'll be focusing as much on that. She didn't look as comfortable going up that distance, but she will take it on in the program. So she gives herself three shots at Ledecky. I would be surprised if she couldn't get her in one of them. But for us, everyone here in Australia is saying, Hey, Antipnus is going in as the favourite. Now, I don't like that. I don't like that rhetoric. In my opinion, Ledecky goes in as the favourite in all three of those events because she is a five-time Olympic champion. She's done everything in the sport. She's the world record holder. So if I was the Australian swim team and, and media, I would be saying Ledecky's the favourite. I'd be pumping up Ledecky and I'd be letting, like, taking as much pressure off Ariane as we can um because those races are going to be high stakes like everybody's eyes are going to be on those races it's probably across the board one of the biggest matchups to get two superstars at the peak of their powers at the same time is so rare um for us in australia it's like a thorpe versus phelps athens 200 freestyle you know we're, we're pumped for it and i'm sure you guys are too um and it's interesting. A bit of the storyline in Australia was, oh, Ledecky doesn't look great at trials. Ledecky's out of form. And I kind of watched a few of her races. And to be honest, like she wasn't really pushed to her limits, particularly in that 400 freestyle. Um, and I would be surprised as a swimming fan if she was fully tapered for that Olympic trials. And I think we haven't seen the best of Katie yet this season. Agreed. And I think the thing I've noticed about Katie Ledecky in the last few years is that she will go to some meets, uh, like in season meets. And if if she's training well at those meets, it's just like, whoo, three, you know, 358, 400 meter freestyle or, 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 uh, there is one meet. It was like a May meet and she like broke the world record in the mile. She went like 357. And it's like, it was like kind of out of nowhere. And, she was just like, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling really good lately. And so it's, I, yeah, I, I think our trials, I'm certainly with any trials, there's nerves, right. There's pressure to make that team. And once mm-hmm. that's kind of off, it's like, okay, now we can really focus. Um, but yeah, this, this was an interesting trials. I think everyone was kind of, the mood was kind of down. It was, it was, it was a weird vibe, but um I, I don't know where to gauge Katie Ledecky, right? It's just like, well, I, what I are the uh, more. What are the coaches and swimmers in America saying? Are they backing Katie or do they see Ariane as the favorite? Like, what, what's the talk on pool deck? It's, it's hard, right? When, yeah, when Katie went 401, I think, and Ariane went 356, it's yeah. like, who? That, that's a big gap. But again, I mean, I, I, I would have to agree with you that it's like Katie is a five-time Olympic champion. She knows how to do this over the past two years. She's been saying, I I've been training really well, obviously she, throughout COVID she had to figure it out like everyone else did. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I, I think like, 
like the Australians, we're excited. We're, uh, we want to see a good duel. And I think we really, we really will. I mean, you said it best. Those are two juggernauts in the primes of their careers. And, and uh, I think, I think it's going to be super exciting to see them go at it three times. I didn't even realize. Yeah. That's, that's where I went spoiled like three times to see them go head to head. Like, if Ariane doesn't get her in the four, can she get her in the two? Her speed look great in the two. Mm. And then 800 freestyle is one of those ones where if the deck is up 2-0, and oh, Ariane could just dig in on that one and push the pace and like really just leave everything in the, in the pool. And that could be a, an exciting race in itself. So we're so spoiled to see the, the, just the opportunity to see them race three times at one Olympics is crazy. And I, and I think the cool thing is that um, Harry Arn is like the first person to make Katie look mortal, right? She is the first person to beat her in a distance over over 200 meters ever yeah. since 2012. And so it's, yeah. it's really exciting coming in because I think Katie kind of has that chip on her shoulder of, of you know, you beat me. <laughs> like, I don't want to lose yeah. again. Um, and Ariane yeah. has just has this amazing momentum and obviously just swam some of the fastest times in history. And so I, yeah, like you said, we're going to be spoiled. That's going to be such so, so many, so many fun races to watch. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Like when you were on pool deck at trials and you guys were watching our trials in Australia, probably um, of, of a morning and stuff, you'd see our, our finals. Were coaches surprised by how fast the Australians were swimming or were swimmers kind of nervous to race us or like, you know, it's probably the first time you've ever watched them live. Like what was the feel around pool deck in America watching us back in Australia? Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> that, that was certainly a new sensation for us, right? Because we're so used to, to knowing what you guys have done already two mm. months, three months in advance. Um, and so I think, I think for us trials a lot that, you know, the United States is very good at having that singular vision of, okay, I'm coming into the meet and I'm focusing on this. And for trials, that focus is I need to make the team. <laughs> um, yeah. so I, I don't think times were a big factor. It was fun seeing people's reactions. So like coming into the morning and being like, Oh, did you see this time the the Australians yeah. posted like oh my gosh or like you know seeing Kaylee break Reagan's world record right before she's about to swim that hundred back it's like I think I think it certainly added a level of pressure for our athletes yeah. um, of yeah. just like okay well now you have to make the team and then if you make the team you have to have this in your you have to think about oh well I need to yeah. go at least this time to to get a medal or to be competitive um, yeah so I think. I think it, it added something for sure. And it was cool yeah. to have them at, be at the same time because it's like, it's like kind of like having an Olympics 2.0 where we're, we're or a virtual Olympics where we're kind of going back and forth and, and getting to compare yeah. and see those results live. And I think in the past, you guys had the advantage because we've swim our trials so early and we've been coming into the Olympics thinking we're killing it, we're killing it, we're killing it. And then all of a sudden, boom. The U.S. trials happen and you guys post all these fastest times in the world and suddenly our swimmers weren't where they thought they were heading into that Olympic Games and then the Olympics is only six weeks away. And for a lot of people that was, uh, you know, added pressure. But also um, for some people it was a real low point because they thought they were, uh, you know, top of the world or they thought they were top, top uh, a medal chance and then America has their trials and suddenly their rankings are bumped right down and, that their whole expectations around the Olympic Games changed. So I think it was a really cool thing for us to, to have it at the same time as, as the US and to be able to compare directly with you guys at the same point in the season. I think it's a big advantage. Agreed. I think it's, yeah, certainly for, for Australians that makes sense. And I, yeah, I, I, like you said, I think it's good for, for both teams. I And I think it, hopefully it helps the confidence of both teams because I think six weeks is a lot less time for, for things to happen, things to go wrong than, you know, three, mm -hmm. three to four months heading into a yeah. games. And so it's like, yeah, if I went this time this week, I can go that time at least in six weeks. 
Yeah, I was trying to explain to some media in Australia. So imagine if you had the the semi-finals in March and then the Super Bowl in August. <laughs> you expect those players to still be in form and they don't play a game in between? That's what we did for so long. That's what I did in 2012. I had my Olympic trials in March. I didn't do one race until August when I swam at the Olympic yeah. Games. It's like, what were we doing? And now I look at it, I'm thinking like, why did it take us so long down here in Australia to catch on to, to what the rest of the world was doing? But we're here now, um, and, and I'm, I'm glad we are. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm super excited for these races. I have to throw in one more race. Um, you know, our, our, one of our other juggernauts, Caleb Dressel, going head-to-head with, with one of your juggernauts, Kyle Chalmers. What, what, what are you thinking about that race in the 100 free? Kyle is really confident, really confident, um, really relaxed and really confident. It, it feels like he's building towards something. Um, I thought both guys would be faster at their uh, uh, trials in the 100 freestyle, but neither of them really got pushed to the line. Um, and I think the only ones that can do that uh, is each other. Um I think Kyle can go sub 47. Uh, I really do. I think I think Caleb can potentially go further sub 47 than Kyle, but um, I think Kyle's going to. Kyle knows where Caleb's strengths are, and those strengths are his skills, and he's underwaters, and that's where he's got the big advantage over Kyle. I think Kyle has faster swim speed throughout that hundred freestyle. But Caleb's so skillful. Because he's so skillful, he can almost toy with his opposition by just smashing that underwater off the turn and then easing off a little and then sprinting that last 15 metres. So I know that Kyle knows that and that the the coaches within the Australian swim team know that and they've been working really hard on his skills. And Kyle looked a much more skillful swimmer this Olympic trials. His starts were on point, his turn was on point, his underwaters are improved. So he knows where he's got to challenge Caleb. Um, And uh, again, this is an exciting one because both of them come into it at the peak of their powers. It it happens so rarely. You often see one swimmer on the way out. There's another one's on the way up. We're we're so spoiled to to have both of these guys at their peak of their powers. I think the advantage that Caleb has is I think if, if he gets a gold medal under his belt at the start of the week in that men's four bar 100 freestyle, it gets a real momentum going for him throughout the week, you know, and he's also got other events to fall back on if the 100 freestyle doesn't pan out the way he plans. 50 freestyle, I mean, can anyone challenge him? It doesn't look like it. 100 butterfly, again, like it's him and then the, the rest. So he's got events to fall back on. For Kyle, realistically, uh, he's all in on this 100 freestyle individual. And that's pretty much his one and only chance. Um, probably four by 200 as well. But the 100 freestyle is really his one and only chance. So it's, I feel like there's probably more pressure on Kyle in that race than Caleb because Caleb does have other chances. So um, for me, and, and you know, coming from where I come from, it's the race of the meet. Um, it's cool to see a couple of other guys internationally throwing down some fast times as well. Um, you know, we've had some Russians swimming fast names I can't think of off the top of my head, but newbies in that event. So I'm I'm looking forward to that race. And as Australians, we're quietly confident that Kyle can get the job done. I mean, you got to be right. Uh, do Do you think he'll swim the 200 individually, especially because it is right before that 100 free in the program? It looks like he will. If I was his coach, I 100% would not. <laughs> I just, I think Kyle's a great not 200 freestyle and he can punch out a 145 mid to 145 low, which is a good time. But that's not going to get you anywhere near the medals in uh, in Tokyo. So what's the point, right? That's, that's my opinion. Why swim an extra 600 metres of hard swimming before you, your main event? If, if I was his coach, I'd certainly be pulling out of it, but um, from everything that I heard around pool deck, it seems that they're going to swim it um, at the Olympics. And I think 
some people close to him think that maybe he can drop that elusive 144 and throw himself up in medal contention. Mm -hmm. Um, But how much does that take out of you going into the 100 freestyle? Like for me personally, um, I used to find if I went to a meet and swim a heat and final, if it's 100 free, I was okay. But a heat, semi and final in two days, 600 metres of of racing for a sprinter, it's just I think it's a little too much. I think that's why Emma won't do it. And if I was advising Kyle, I would say the same. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. I I the only people I feel like we've ever seen have success on that is certainly on this stage is is Van der Hoogen band. Mm. And, you know, in, in back in the day, I I, I did Thorpe yeah. ever medal in the hundred free. Thorpe Thorpe medaled in Athens in the hundred freestyle. Okay. Um, but I feel like the hundred freestyle since then has become so much more special. It's like you know, with all due respect to Thorpe, he, he medaled in 48 point. Like, he didn't have to go 46. Yeah. Um, and that's what Paul is going to have to do. It's like it's a different ball game, right? And I think um, the 100 freestyle, the, the quality of that field has improved so much and the depth. You know, if, if you look back to when Thorpe was racing 2000, 2004, it was pretty much Australia versus the US. Sprinkle a couple of different Europeans in there as well like you who can dance but you know we were the two juggernauts now there's challenges from around the world kyle can't afford to have a super cruisy 48 point semi and come into that final you know fresh he's going to have to swim 47 low in the semi he's going to probably have to swim 48 low to 47 high in the heats so um you know i I don't think there's a place currently in swimming to to double in the men's 100 and 200 Probably Duncan Scott will try it as well. Um, but I think he's a better 200 swimmer. Um, so, you know, if I was Kyle, I'd stay, steer right clear of it. Well, James, I always appreciate getting your, getting your perspective, uh, sitting down to chat with you. you. You've always got great things to say. Uh, any parting <laughs> thoughts on, on these upcoming Olympic Games before we sign off today? Look, my parting thoughts, I think as an Australian team, we're really excited about this Olympics. I think it's our strongest team we've had in a long time. We've made a lot of changes down here around our trials, around our coaching systems, and we've got a really young up and coming team. Um, We saw a comment here in Australia leading into our trials, which was really interesting from Lily King, where she said she thought that America could win every gold medal in the pool. And that really excites us as a country. (laughs) You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.